Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Back to the Road News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you all are doing super, super well. We have some exciting news. The little Miss Pippa, my dog who you do not know, she is officially cast free. So she's had a cast for the last week, six weeks, so she's happy to have that. Then she still has some a bit of recovery to do, but she's doing super, super well. I know you all ask about her. And so we have a lot going on, though, in the royal sphere as well. We have Catherine and William both doing a couple of joint engagements and or sorry, no single engagements. And we also have just still kind of the backlash going on from Harry's book. Apparently, it has not been. It has not made him or Megan eat any more popular. It may, it's made them less so. And then the question becomes, why write the book? Because the point of the book is usually not only to give people an insight into yourself, but to make yourself more likable. Apparently, they both failed in that endeavor. <laughs> so it's just been interesting to see just the fallout of all this and just what is going on kind of behind the scenes. And so, and Megan's mysterious absence. So Megan has been absent for this entire Harry rollout, which surprises me a bit because I feel like she always has to, you know, get in because she wants to... Um, just let everybody know that she's there and stuff. And I just wonder, it's like, if she realizes how bad it was and just is like, I don't want to be involved in this. Although I will give her credit. It is apparently, you know, pouring in Montecito and has been for the last several weeks. So I'm sure they're paying an enormous sum of money for their home. That's probably flooded or damaged or something. Um, and yeah, so it's been interesting. And so it just begs the question so much of why has Megan been silent? And although, and I know a couple headlines have mentioned as well that Catherine is still now the most popular British royal in the United States. So again, Harry and Megan, I feel like they have epically, epically failed in whatever venture was with this book. But let's start off. Ms. Marie, thank you so much for the tip. Has anyone else heard Harry and Megan are hiding in Canada right now because they're worried about safety in California now. I have not heard that, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they're both like, it's so dumb in my opinion. And it sounds bad, but I'm like, who is, again, I asked, beg the question, who's dumber? Harry for writing the book or Megan for letting him write the book where they both look like idiots? Because I mean, again, saying the number of the amount of people you killed, again, I'm all for him sharing all about his military service. I have no issue with that whatsoever. I think that's great. But the issue I always had is putting a number to it. It's never a good idea to put a number to anything. Never a good idea. Because then you run the risk, again, especially in a wartime situation, of people going, well, you killed X number of people. I'm going to kill X number of your people in response. And Harry just wants us all to think of him as this war hero and not question it. And I feel like that's just incredibly dense on his part. And I still can't believe his publisher let him just the idea of you just get the sense that he did not have a strong editing hand with this book because there's just things I'm like, why as a right, like we don't need to know when he lost his virginity. We don't need to know about his frostbitten and penis and that he got, you know, he was trying to alleviate it with the Elizabeth Arden cream that smelled just like his mother's. <laughs> Why, like, what does that add to our understanding of his character? It just doesn't add anything. Now, I will be honest, I haven't had a chance yet to start reading the book. There's just been so much going on, and I'm just trying to kind of set up different things. So, um, that because I, I would like to go full time pretty soon, but I just want to make sure I have, you know, additional revenue streams and those sorts of things. So, it's just all a lot going on in my head right now. But again, it's just the rest of the book might be fine but again why even put that in there so if they're hiding out in canada i mean if they only have themselves to blame because again why put any of that stuff out there i'd be curious to know if they're hanging out with jessica mulroney who megan like totally ditched after she became a duchess and you know jessica had her scandal and was like oh i want nothing to do with jessica anymore i mean you just do feel well not totally but megan's megan's friends they are fair weather friends all of them they, they're all there in there for their own gain, and you can always tell that. So um, as soon as something gets difficult, they're like, ah, it's convenient now. Let's just drop you over here. It'll be fine. <laughs> all right. Well, Spring Verve, thank you so much for the super sticker. I will go back up here, too. And we have Squash Girl. Oh, my goodness. Yes, your first comment. She's at home having a mental breakdown because he is getting all the attention. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. And she's not getting good attention. Again, the idea that she thought 
that sharing the story about the bridesmaids dresses where, and I mean, I feel like every story Harry has of her, she's down crying on the floor. So you can just almost feel the emotional manipulation. You know, she's always on the floor bawling. She's bawling. And uh, I mean, I get it. It's an emotional stress, tough time or whatever, but at the same time, it's like, can, uh, can you not function without being on the floor crying? I, I just don't, quite understand. Um, I'm not, I'm not a crier. I, I will be perfectly honest. So I'm not a crier. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't see how that matters in that. She thought that somehow asking the, the whole lip gloss story that Harry thought that would make Megan look good, that Megan probably thought it looked make made Megan look good. And I was like, you just sound incredibly unhygienic and uncultured. So, and you're supposed to be the super smart, the smartest girl ever. I get it. It's all crazy. Uh, PJK asked, did anyone see Sky News Australia courtiers leaking Charles preparing to pay $50 million to bring Harry home? I haven't seen that, and I don't think that's the case. Uh, Charles knows his reign is somewhat precarious, so I can't imagine that he would go, okay, let's do, use $50 million to bring – I mean, what is the point of bringing him home anymore? He's so severely unliked. So it, it, just, it's, it would be one thing perhaps if Harry and Meghan – this is the thing about business too. If you are a huge person in, you know, an entertainment person, let's say you're James Gunn. Sorry, I, I like movies and stuff. And although I haven't gone to the theater in like three years now, because most of what they're producing is crap. But anyways, so if you're James Gunn and you're a really popular director and you managed to make the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise and stuff, and you made a, a fairly good Suicide Squad movie, I think, and you are, you are somebody who could lead it. Well, the um, Warner Brothers poached him from Marvel. And so he is paid a lot of money because the idea is, is that he's popular and ergo, he's a creative that he can bring them more money. Same thing with, um, what's his name? Ryan Murphy, who is over at Netflix now and Shonda Rhimes. So they both signed huge deals with Netflix because they are big enough figures where in business sense, it makes sense to poach them because it's like, well, okay. So Netflix is thinking, well, they made really good content for ABC and Fox or FX or whatever. And so let's bring them over here so they can make good content for us. Harry and Meghan don't even have that appeal anymore. What at this point would be worthwhile to give $50 million to bring Harry home in terms of business? And I know monarchy monarchies are somewhat business and whatnot, but just from a pure business standpoint, it makes no sense to pay any like that level of money at all for Prince Harry. He's toxic. He's divisive. So many different things. So I just feel like he is, it just does not make any sense to even remotely put that level of money out there. All right. Jacqueline says, thank you so much for the tip. There are rumors circulating that Nutmeg was not supportive or agreed with what was written in his memoir. That's why she's been very quiet. I can see that too. I mean, that could be a precipice for a potential divorce is that she's so mad that she comes off across so terribly in the book, which she really does. But also he's so enamored with her. Why wouldn't he, I would assume she would look over every aspect of it. So it is just to me fascinating because I was like, why would you make a book that makes your that that your husband sounds so stupid in? That's just uh, unbelievable to me. I would be like mortified if my husband was saying what Harry was saying in this book. Mortified. <laughs> Unless it had something pertinent to do with X, Y, and Z. It's like, do you really need to know? Because I feel like, again, I haven't read the whole passage, but it's almost like Harry's talking about Elizabeth, you know, his frostbitten penis was a way for him to talk about his mother. And I'm like, there had to be better ways to do that <laughs> without that little anecdote or the, the section about him losing his virginity. Again, do, do we need to know that? Does that add anything to our understanding of Harry as a person? I don't think so. I really don't. So yeah, it's all just super, super weird. I think all right. Kooky Toot says, how do you feel about the real house live recap? Copying recollections may vary for their merch. Well, I mean, it's, it's a catchy, a great word. It really is. Okay. Hold on. Stop, Bella. No. Um, so yeah, it's it's just crazy. <laughs> it's so weird. All right. And then so let's just say some good mornings. Good morning, Renee. Good morning, Monica. Um, Rare Gem. Um, Pia, I cracked a 50% off on first day in the release. Yes, I, I will say as well when it comes to Harry's book release, I just find it. I, I think the numbers are inflated. And I've heard this before because I watch again a lot of 
stuff related to what's going on in Hollywood. And there's this one guy who used to own a comic book store and he talked about how they would have order quota. So they had to order a certain amount to actually make orders. So let's say they just wanted three of one thing. Well, they were, had to order five of another thing to get the three of the one thing they needed so that the publisher could then count it as more sales than was actually selling. So I would be curious how obviously it's done. And, and if you release a book and people less like you less, I don't think the book was that successful. And again, I feel like Harry could have talked more about his his time in the military or talked about the Invictus games or talked about what they were doing going forward, but just seems like always to be such a gripe fest. So much complaining. Oh my gosh. Could anybody complain more than Harry and Meghan? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't live in a $15 million mansion. I love California. I think California is a beautiful place. They have, they live in one of the most ideal locations in California in many ways, the richest. And so it's like, why are you complaining? Sorry. And if you're just wondering, I was just, I had those little bit of the cocoa thing on top of my cocoa. So that's what I grabbed there. Okay. Um, who did that piece about she's the smartest royal of them all? I mean, I've heard that so many times. I will say also, I saw it a lot in Lady Colin Campbell's book and it very much confused me because to me, if I was Megan, and again, I, I'm somebody who, I don't know if I'm maybe slightly on the autistic scale. I can't, like I am an INTP if you ever follow like Myers-Briggs. So it's just like logic and stuff and just kind of strategy a bit. Like if I was Megan, I would have played her time in the royal family a thousand times better than she did. She did a terrible, terrible job because to make her brand work in America, you had to get at least people to really, really engage and like you. Now, while she did, I feel like somewhat appeal to the American audience, she really was very divisive figure as well. And so it was just this thing where I felt like Megan should have stayed longer. She should have made better connections. She just complained and she didn't follow any of the protocol. And she looked sloppy, I felt like, the entire time as a royal. So she always, I felt like, you know, she always did the messy bun was like her signature royal hairdo. And I'm like, really? A messy bun? That's what I do. Like, my hair is in the clip because I don't try to do messy buns really unless I'm like at home at home or going to the gym. But it's like, you literally went outside in a messy bun thinking that, oh, this is chic and great. And I'm like, it's not. <laughs> so I felt like she really just had no, she didn't do enough to make the British people love her and then expected the American people to just bowl over her because she's she has this title and she didn't even spend enough time in the British royal family to actually I feel like make any of her goals a reality in a lot of ways because yes they have made these huge deals but will any of these deals last I have no idea and she also just again it's like this time thing you had to spend time you had to develop your role you had to develop and build all these connections that she never really made and then just expected everybody to just just be fascinated by her because she God, Harry? I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, Jen Jen says, do you think George will hate Harry for what he's doing to his parents? Uh, he'll probably come to resent his uncle. He probably won't be close ever with his uncle. And I, I think that's entirely possible. And honestly, I don't think any of the Wales's kids will be close with Harry because they aren't spending any time with him now. So I just don't think there's just any way that they'll end up being really all that close. And I, I, you know, I do think that's sad. I spent most of my childhood away from my extended family, not, not for bad reasons, just because our, we had moved to a different side of the country. And so getting back was, was hard and challenging. So I'm not as close to some of my extended relatives as it would probably be nice to be, but um, Harry and Megan, like if you don't understand aristocratic circles are very insular in the UK and you can be, you know, dirt poor and be an aristocrat and, and run in very exclusive circles. And these circles are tight. They protect their own. They don't do things to, they protect each other and they protect their kids. And so they're very, in that way, like you grow up in, in a bubble. And so this idea that Harry would deny his children this opportunity to be in this bubble where everybody agrees, you don't talk about certain things and nobody shares anything. And that's how it works. And so that the kids can have relatively normal lives, even though they're an incredible affluence, and I'm sure they know they are. They are also able to live relatively normal lives because they're not 
they have these people who are all in the same boat is that they don't want their names and stuff in the press all the time because they are aristocrats. Harry and Meghan, again, Meghan's a D-list actress and she still acts like a D-list actress. She's still desperate for fame and attention that she was denied because she didn't have talent. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying that to, to say that. Um, Lori Shelley, thank you so much for the super sticker. All right, Asima asks to, are the Markles writing a book? I've heard they are multiple times different ways. So I think they probably will be. And so, yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see what everybody comes up with. And I just want to say hello to, just to get back up to the top of the list here in a second, uh, Michelle, Diana, Le Sheila, Nancy, PJK, um, Ulrika. Good, good afternoon from Sweden. Oh, yes, I am planning on going to Sweden later this year. I'm going for National Day and hopefully the King's Jubilee celebrations officially in September. I'm very excited about that. So I'm, I, I'm really stoked. It's going to be awesome. All right, Diana, oh, I woke up to your dog throwing up everywhere. I've had those mornings. Although still the worst was when the poor thing broke her elbow. That was like the worst thing to wake up to ever. I still have actually her cries, I think. I think I do on my sleep bed. She woke up just crying, crying, crying. And I'm like, what is going on? So it was really sad. And Melissa and Evelyn from Sicily. Ooh, Sicily. Oh, so many places I want to go, guys. Um, so Jade, uh, having a good day after feeling sick from fibromyalgia. I hope you're feeling better. That's so... I'm glad you're feeling better today. That's so good. I hope you continue to feel better and that you just continue to improve. And I hope maybe this gives you a little bit of distraction for the day. All right. And Victoria and um, Asima and Marie. Yes. Good morning, all you guys. Um, <laughs> Asima asked, why are people watching that Netflix documentary? So if you have not heard, the Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan, is their second most watched ever, apparently. And I honestly don't think that's like a super big deal. Uh, they're second to the Tindler Swindler. And there was, there's always going to be this, something that surpasses them. What I will say is that they were beaten by the Tindler, Tindler Swindler. It's pretty bad because by all stretches of the imagination, Harry and Megan's should have been blowing everything out of the water. That it's not totally. I mean, the Tindler Swindler has been on for a longer period of time. I think it came out in 2022 as well, but I could be mistaken on that. Uh, but Harry and Megan should have blown everything out of the water. That anything be it is like incredibly surprising. All right. And Lori, I think I thanked you, but go ahead. I'm going to go ahead just and thank you again real quick here. I'm going to get to thank you so much, Jennifer, for the super sticker. You are so kind. All right. And B-level baby. Thank you so much for the tip as well. The queen shows strength against her son, Andrew, but Arles, Charles appears weak against his son, Harry. I would agree with that to a certain extent. I feel like Charles needs to make the separation clear. It's come to the point where it's just better to just separate everything and just make it abundantly clear that Harry is and Harry, Meghan are doing their own thing. The monarchy has nothing to do with it. And Harry does not represent the monarchy in any way, shape, and form. That's why I feel like is, is somewhat the danger going on right now is that Harry is saying to a certain extent that he still represents the monarchy. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. He is saying, even though he's left your company, that he's still representing your company. And Charles is trying to build a new brand with the monarchy or, or evolving the brand of the monarchy. Because Elizabeth was queen for 70 years. And so they do need to rebrand to a certain extent. They need to change up what they're doing. And so Charles is the one that has to lead that. He has to lead them into basically the 21st century. The queen has done that somewhat, but not really. Uh, especially in her latter years, she's older. She just can't do quite as much. So I feel like it's, it's just a complicated, complicated situation. And Charles, though, needs to be king and needs to lead on this. And I think he needs to set the tone for future generations. This may only happen the one time. But if you say, hey, if you are going to lead the royal family, if you're going to have a royal role, there's very specific um outlines that need to happen. And so let's say if you're given a title, if you decide to leave the country to pursue your own personal interests, you get that title back. That is required of you. And if you step out of line, if you step in, out in a way that damages the monarchy's public reputation, we will come and we will strip that title from you. And that is, it should be, that should be a, a somewhat threat that is there. And I feel like that is not, is it's just really... I, I think it's it would be good for the future for everybody to know that, hey, if you step out of line, 
consequences do happen. Because right now, it's just unclear what the consequences will be. Again, I feel like the silence is probably driving Harry and Meghan nuts because now they, they have nothing to work with if the monarchy is being silent. They can kind of complain, well, the monarchy's not saying anything. It's like, well, they're not saying anything. You, you just can't argue with a ghost. And so I feel like Harry and Meghan, the monarchy is starting to shut them off a bit that way. But I think the separation needs to be clear. But I also understand too, I think it would be best if it was like almost completely led by parliament. Parliament completely said, Hey, we're going to do this. And Charles is like, okay, nothing I can do. All right. Oh, Sharon. Good morning, Pippa from Butter and Biscuit. Oh, she says, thank you. She's sleeping right next to me. She's, she's got on, she's not supposed to jump off the couch, but she gets on the couch. So I try to prevent her from jumping off. I don't always succeed. Um, she's only jumped off once, so, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, Elsie, thank you for the live, Bernie. At this point, it's, it's, it's starting to feel burnout about HMN. This is so much exposure. It is so much exposure. They are so completely overexposed, especially Harry. And I don't know. Again, Megan is someone, though, who has been desperate for the spotlight forever. And she just, I think, is somebody who thinks the more people talk about her, the better things are. Um and so, sorry, my sister's dog has been going nuts in the corner and she wants to go out on the patio. So I may let her out here in a second because she's just going absolutely, I, th I think something's, something's going on. Um, so, um, but yeah, there's, they're so overexposed and this is, again, you don't want to be overexposed because you want to give people that drip drip. So that's why perhaps Megan is, is standing back because she wants that drip drip to come to her and but it's just, again, like she had to be part of it. There's just no way she was not part of this in some form or another. And so, um, sorry, trying to make sure my little one doesn't jump off. Uh, so it's just one of those things where it's just, uh, I just don't know what they're thinking. And their PR is just a mess. Like their PR is the worst thing I've ever seen, I feel like. And, but again, it's like they don't help themselves. I'm like, who put the, Harry's number in his book? Harry wanted it in his book. Who talked about the lip gloss? Harry and Megan. I'm like, what are you guys thinking? Mr. K said, um, thank you so much for the tip. His Highness the King would never um, allow himself or his family to be blackmailed. Earl Spencer tried after King Charles brought his abandoned sister-in-law back from South Africa after he went broke. Yeah, so I definitely, I mean, Charles is strong, but I feel like... Um, like your children are totally different. Like if it's your cousin, if it's your in-laws, something like that, I feel like you can be somewhat distance and be okay. But I feel like if it's your like son or daughter, I just feel like the emotions there do become a bit different. And so that's what um, I think, I think is um, going on right now. Ah, ah, Aram Scott said yesterday I saw a video is M truth the truth. And she is good. And she has your recollections Mayberry t-shirt. Oh, yes, I am planning on ordering more. It's just Harry, with Harry's book and everything. It's been so crazy. And it is really actually much more difficult than you would think to actually get everything packaged and out. I was just, I was just floored how long it took, but I'm so excited to order more and in more colors. I'm so excited. Um, so Terry, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you, Jenny, as well. Mr. Kagan, so the Spotify, Netflix, and Penguin deals are all based on actual performance. So far, they won't have anywhere near the contracted money. So, yes, that is true, I think, especially for Netflix. Netflix will be pleased that it's done so well, but also I'm sure they're wondering, I think we were hoping this would do better than that. And that might seem, to a certain extent, cruel or something, but it, business is business. And I don't feel like Harry totally understands that yet, <laughs> that business is is it's heartless. They don't care. Like, I guess he did think at some point about stopping the publication of his book. And I'm sure his publisher is like, um, too bad. So sad. Love dad. Uh, you signed a contract. We want our money. And this book is going to bring us money. And it could be right now that Megan is writing her memoir. I don't think her memoir will sell nearly as well. She doesn't even have enough dirt really to, to make a memoir. Cause at this point, I think they're getting to the point where they're going to have to start making things up. And I know that they've, they've twisted things and everything like that. But I feel like because everything right now around their brand is based around the monarchy. So what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to get more and more and more extreme to try to gain back the media attention because they gave away their biggest card, which was perhaps a racism card. And now they say they won't talk about it anymore and they won't reveal anything about it. And so it's like, 
Well, then what are you going to do? That That's the biggest draw, I feel like, for people. That's what people want to know to a certain extent. So Harry and Megan just – well, I feel like get stuck in this place where they have to literally go to the extreme in order to get attention back and people won't like that. So, you know, they're, especially Netflix or live to lead thing, totally tanked. Uh, their Invictus games thing. I don't know how well that'll do. It could do really well. It could do very poorly at this point. It all depends. I feel like to a certain extent, some military people will now like shun Harry because they're like, Hey, you did this kind of terrible thing. Seeing the number, you know, we've had to deal with, greater troop issues and everything morale is down because you were an idiot and you thought you were always right. And so it's just one of those things where I feel like it's just going to start really snowballing against them. And I don't think things without the monarchy will do well and they don't have anything else. That's what I think they proved. I would be so impressed if they, their first things had nothing to do with the monarchy, but everything had to do with the monarchy. And I get it, it's time and stuff because the queen died and everything, but still, it just seems so tacky and sad. All right, Miss Pippi, you can help me? All right. Okay, so Leslie Warren, thank you so much for the super sticker. All right, Kayla asks, hello, are you going to be doing more in Europe trips because uh, besides England this year? I can't go to one, but I'd love to go to another in the future. Yes, so I'm planning on, I'm hoping to get a, um, I, mean, I need to ask them because it'd probably be good to go ahead and get it up fairly soon next couple months um hoping to go to scotland in october or september um so if you're interested in another trip that's one there's also um because they have just pre-designed trips already which is helpful and so they also have ones going to italy but italy's kind of italy's interesting though so italy is a a modern country and the fact that it was actually only founded in like the 1800s before then Italy was just a, a cadre of little states. And so you have Venice and um, Milan and Florence and you have the, the, the papal state. So the Vatican that controlled them. And so you have all these different families of so the Sforzas, the Medici's and um, um, the Borgias, which were more papal states and they were kind of just influential. And so anyways, there's just a whole bunch of different states. So I don't know if they're quite as great. They just don't have, they used to have some France trips, but I guess France has gotten really expensive. And so they pull those trips down. So I'm really hoping the France trips come back because it's like, I really want to go to Versailles and some of the castles because they're just so gorgeous. Um, and Versailles, like and Versailles and like the Louvre are some of my favorite places. So I'm planning on doing, um, more trips, hopefully again, one, one more this year. And then beyond that, we will, we will see how it goes. I mean, obviously I want to see too, how it goes with this first trip. Cause I haven't tried it before. I just saw of another influencer who had done it and really liked it. And so, um, and it's been, I would say really been a really easy, great process so far. So I'm excited to see where it goes. All right. Uh, so Jessica, thank you so much for the tip. Said, I think, um, Megan will come back with some flashy news like she's pregnant again or something. Her great comeback, kind of attention-seeking move. I would totally agree with that. It'll be attention-seeking. It'll be something where it's like, look, it's me, Megan Markle, and I'm back, baby. So she will definitely do something like that. But again, I feel like I, her and Harry, their popularity is, is, is starting to tank. They're overexposed. They're obnoxious. They are people who just can't seem to take a hint and it's just getting one of those things where it's just becoming a bit too too much and too overblown all right so uh janae thank you so much for the super sticker all right uh teresa so what do you guys think is ladies um see secret i don't know <laughs> I don't know. Um, so T Grim 50, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, so be it. Ryan says if Charles does what he, um, does what we all want, it, it just fuels the victim narrative. They peddle, they need parliament to intervene and they can, their conduct thus far is the better of the two. Their conduct thus far is the better of two evils. So yes. So I feel like, um, yeah, if Charles, apologizes and does the summit on Harry and Meghan's terms. It just literally just plays right into their hands of what they want. Harry and Meghan want groveling. They want uh, the whole world to just grovel at their feet and apologize because we've all been terrible, horrible, no good, very bad human beings for not being totally enamored with Meghan Markle. That is our cardinal sin is not being 
utterly obsessed with her like Harry is. And so Harry needs to A, get a grip. <laughs> She's not that interesting. I mean, I feel like so much of her is so overblown. So overblown. I'm like, uh, you just don't. She's never actually struck me as being as deep as she thinks she is. I think she's very um, shallow, really. Okay. All right. So second, second baby has to get on the couch now. Uh, <laughs> so everybody can be happy. Uh, so, yeah, I think. Um, so, yeah, if they apologize and do everything that Harry and Meghan want, the monarchy, I mean, they'll be sunk. They're, they'll never win if they apologize to Harry and Meghan. I mean, even Jeremy Clarkson, he apologized once Harry and Meghan now are coming after his entire career. They want to destroy him. That's terrible. Again, it's just that that feeling of grace going, okay, you know, they apologize. You know, perhaps they haven't done everything, but let's accept the apology. But no, they had to push it further. It's like, well, he's done this a lot of times. So let's just take everything from him. And it's like, that's terrible. That's a terrible way to go about business. And again, I feel like Harry and Meghan too. Again, they don't have this, again, draw of being perhaps a big name in Hollywood in terms of actually being a creative to pull, to get more people to invest in them. They have the connection to the monarchy. That's what everybody paid for is the connection to the monarchy. But they also, okay, now I totally lost my train of thought there. Totally lost my truth. Okay, maybe it'll come back to me. But again, I, do, I just don't feel like they're, they're just such a bit players in so many ways. And yet they think they're these massive figures that can demand this massive apology. I guess I was thinking that they think they're so special and important. And Megan is so critical to the monarchy that they need to beg her to return to run the Commonwealth because nobody's going to trust Charles or anybody else to do it. I was like, honey, they don't need you just because you share a your skin tone perhaps is closer to certain people does not mean you connect with them any better than anybody else in the British Royal family. Cause a, you grew up in the upper middle class neighborhood of California. And a interesting, interesting little note is that Octavia Spencer, who was in the help and other things, she came from Alabama. She said she felt more racism in California when she first moved there than she did ever growing up in Alabama and Alabama is a deep South. That's the deep South. So again, I just feel like, all of it just doesn't, doesn't come together. Uh, hi, Brittany. Malister hot chocolate is lovely. Do you think Harry has realized that he isn't the spirit anymore since Charlotte was born? Oh, I'll have to re remember that because I love hot chocolate. Um, so when it comes to Harry realizing he's a spare, I mean, I think that perhaps is what he started with the like the jealousy thing, it really started with, you know, the kids being born. And I think perhaps that resentment grew because all of a sudden he wasn't the spare. But I mean, again, that was inevitable. <laughs> all monarchies work this way. He should know, like he displaced his uncles and his aunt. Again, it's just this, I don't understand where this comes from because I always thought Harry was perfectly content to be the spare because you get so much more freedom. Yes, you are thrown under the bus sometimes to protect the air, but Guess what? You only get thrown under the bus if you do something that gets yourself thrown under the bus. If you are more or less pretty good, you probably won't be thrown under the bus that much. Uh, there's so many easier targets. So I don't understand what they're thinking. Uh, but Harry just, I feel like he just is such a resentful guy. And it's really just really, really pathetic. And especially if you resent your niece and nephews, they can't control where they were born any more than you can. And that's life. Again, there's that serenity for accepting the things I cannot change, changing the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That is, I, you know, I don't care where your, your faith resides or anything like that, but I feel like that is just such sound advice. Change the things you can, recognize there are things you cannot change, and the wisdom to learn the difference. So I wish I was taller. It would be awesome if I was like 5'9", because my weight could be distributed better. I think... You, maybe my if my shoe size was bigger, I can even get better deals on shoes and stuff. But it's not. I can't change that. So I can just only control the things I can. So again, that's that's the whole thing. Um, so Jen Jen, did you see the Anne Boleyn thing on Netflix? I haven't seen that. Is that the sex, lies, and royalty thing? If if it is, I don't know. I, and I know they did a they cast a. Um, um, a black woman once as Anne Boleyn, which, yeah, I'd have issues with that just because you can't do the reverse, right? That's just my opinion on things. Okay. 
All right. Alondra, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. I'm so glad. Hopefully that you are enjoying this little live stream. Kay says, don't you find it interesting? M who craze's spotlight has been very quiet now that all the bad press is happening. Oh, yes. And we haven't even gotten like the little drip drips we would get all the time. So you remember, again, if you didn't watch Royal for a while, you just started really royal watching as Harry and Meghan entered the picture. Like the amount of things we would get from Harry and Meghan was insane compared to what we would get before. We'd hardly get anything before. And like most of the things I would see in magazines like Us Weekly and In Touch, I knew were complete BS for the most part. A anymore, we just got just like an avalanche of stuff all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you just got to stop. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. Jacqueline's, their PR is like a nuclear dumpster exploding. Yes, it is. And it's exploding in their faces. And again, just like stupid things they put in there. I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> and again, I can't, you know, you can't fix stupid. And I, I, I hate to use those terms too. I really do. But I just don't have any other word for it. Foolish, dumb, like just dumb. Okay. And we'll use H's book as, as grounds for divorce. I actually do agree with that. I think she probably could. All right, Mary, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Leslie as well, thank you so much for joining, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. I know this is kind of crazy and weird. And hope you all have a hot beverage of some sort. Mine is always hot chocolate. Um, Lori says, do you think Edward has been absent um, from family events due to the Duke of Edinburgh understandable snub? It could be. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's been so weird because we've heard about that for years. It's been the understanding, my, my understanding about it for years that we haven't, that he hasn't been given the title of Duke of Edinburgh, I think is kind of interesting. And it is a high ranking title. So it's just so hard because I just feel like Charles is wondering, okay, well, your son will inherit that title. He'll be Duke of Edinburgh. Well, wouldn't it make sense for like Louis to be Duke of Edinburgh? Because I'm curious what they'll do with the Duke of York title because Duke of York now is so, I feel like, stained. That would normally have gone to Louis because he's the second-born son. Um, but I, they could be changing things up, too. They may make Charlotte a the Duchess of York in her own right. I think that would be fantastic because they did amend the rules in Sweden a bit because technically, so the the whoever was the crown prince or princess, or I think actually any of the princesses really – if you married somebody that did not have a title, you would be stripped of yours. And so there was a big question about when Crown Princess Victoria wanted to marry her now husband, Daniel, who is a normal guy. He ran a, a gym, actually. He had his own gym that he ran, that he had to be made a prince before they could marry. Otherwise, she would lose her title. And But I think they have amended and changed things around because Princess Madeline, she married her husband, Christopher O'Neill. She's still a princess. And her children are all princes and princesses as well. So they inherited the title through her because um, Chris doesn't have any sort of title. And I think that's really cool. I, w I wish more families would do it that way. Uh, if they did do that way, obviously Beatrice would become then the Duchess of York upon her father's death. And I don't know if they want to do that. Again, that's all very... I could see Charles almost wanting to wipe the slate clean in a way and just trying to start with the new. So I don't know. And it could also be maybe that he's having some sort of health issue. Hopefully not. But that could that could be another reason why he hasn't been seen much. Um, we did just see um, Sophie recently. So and, you know, maybe they just took a break. It's been a long, hard year for everyone. And they just want to take a break for a while. I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> Carlos says, if William cheated on Kate, why would he think he could keep it a secret? Again, this goes back actually to the aristocracy bubble. So if William did cheat on Kate, it'd be most likely somebody within that circle if he was smart. And discretion rules in there. So that's how royals have done it for centuries, basically. And, and I feel like cheating is a bit more acceptable in those circles, even though it shouldn't be. Obviously, cheating is always bad. But because most of those relationships throughout time have been dynastic decisions, not love decisions, it, I think it became more acceptable to say, yes, you have to marry lady so-and-so and, -so and uh, you know, you're Lord such-and-such -such or Duke of such-and-such and, -such and you, you had to marry this girl. And you, you guys, you know, you, you stand each other, but you don't really get along that well. And so you have your little thing on the side. And I feel like that's more acceptable in those circles. So it'll be, uh, I, I could see that if that did happen, there, there would be a lot of 
discretion involved. But still, things come out, things get talked about. So it'd be interesting. And again, I don't want to ever say nothing would happen because people are human and people cheat. It's just life. So, um, but I, I don't see it being a super big thing. I could see it. I felt like there was a tension, more tension earlier in their marriage. I feel like they're very, very settled now. They're on the exact same page. They walk in sync. They dress in sync. They talk in sync. They, they, they posed once where they were pretty much kind of back to back in sync. They were posing in sync, talking to people. So I feel like Perhaps the tension and the struggles earlier in their marriage is gone. And so I feel like they're very settled, very, very solid. If 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 he cheated maybe earlier in the marriage, I could see it. But now I just don't even see it because I think he's so settled in their relationship. Um, so Andrew B., thank you so much for the tip question. Is Do you think there is trouble in paradise? And that is why Megs won't let the kids leave the state. She may not have a good PR, but it sounds like her separation lawyer is advising her well. I've always... If they do, if they go, um, if they do divorce this year, I was, I would be like, I totally called it. Cause I always call five years. Um, I know I didn't start this channel until last year. So you guys don't know, but, um, if I ever got my sister on here, she could say, yes, I always ever gave this marriage five years. Cause I don't think they have anything in common. I don't think they have anything in common really, except for their supposed. And I mean, this is even what they've told us. Their supposed philanthropy that, that's great, but I don't feel like that's a foundation for a good relationship because marriages that last a long time, generally you like doing the same things. Harry likes hunting. Megan doesn't like that. Harry likes drinking. Megan doesn't like that. Harry used to smoke. Harry doesn't smoke anymore. Uh, although I think that is good for his health. So I don't, I don't question him there, but your foundation of things you enjoy doing is the same. I don't feel like Harry and Megan enjoy the same things. I don't feel like they do. They like their kids, I'm sure, and they they love their kids and they enjoy spending time with their kids. But in terms of like everyday things that they enjoy doing, I don't feel like they have any of that in common. Harry gave up pretty much everything to please her. And that will begin to not you at some point. That will begin to fracture your relationship at some point. And Megan as well, she has remade Harry. But I think at some point, especially if you're a strong woman, you... At some point, and I don't necessarily think Megan is a super strong woman, but in her mind, she is this blazing trailblazer or whatever. Um, that Megan is probably going to get annoyed with wimpy Harry because she wants that strong man, strong man that, you know, she married and he may not be that anymore because she's made him something even she doesn't <laughs> Like, which I feel like would be the, the just so ironic. It would be so ironic. I would love it. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I definitely could see there being trouble in paradise. I think they're probably ro going through their money so quickly. I mean, again, they've, let's say um, at the, the high end, they've made $150 million so far. Their security, I'm sure, costs a couple million dollars per year. Uh, I'm sure that house costs a couple million dollars per year in terms of mortgage and everything. And, or, you know, at least close to a million. And they're paying a lot in property taxes. And California is an insanely expensive place to live. They have these huge cars and they have this property that requires a lot of maintenance. You have a pool that requires maintenance, a lawn, a house. Harry says nothing about replacing the pipes. So they have all these financial expenses and they had to produce the things and things aren't necessarily going well. And then you have these great boons. It's like, ooh, they kept saying, oh, your book is the best selling ever. And then it's beaten by a children's book in Australia. And so it's, it's not quite as good as you were being led to believe. In addition, they're like, hey, nobody likes you anymore. <laughs> And Harry's like, but I keep seeing my truth. I keep seeing my truth. And turns out nobody likes his truth. So I feel like there's probably a lot of tension in their household. And again, I would have said this for a while because it's like, I don't think they have anything in common. I think we did get a pretty good insight into their household and the cut. And it was just really weird because, you know, they have two chairs in their office, like thrones and everything. It's just so weird. All right, Gemma, thank you so much for the tip. Asking similar, is Megan about to jump ship? The book reflected on them both poorly and she would have signed off on the final draft. They are both close or she deliberately allowed him to look like a fool. I mean, I would say, I wouldn't be surprised if she made him look like a fool, but that she looked like a fool shocked me. I'm like, how did you let him put this in the book? That you just wanted to go barrel over and hug William. I was even starting to watch Wednesday again last night because I, I got through my Frasier run again. Although I may still watch Frasier. I really like Frasier. Um, 
And the girl goes up to hug Wednesday and she's like, hugs. And she's like, oh, you don't like hugs, do you? And Wednesday's like, no. And I was like, well, my, why couldn't Megan do that? And when I was watching her hugs for one of the videos, it's like a full body rub your back hug. And I'm sure that's what she did to William. And William was just like recoiled in horror. Cause, and you think too, and, and this may be something where people are like, what? But in certain circles, especially conservative circles, there are some men, especially married men who are very careful not to be seen alone with a woman, touching a woman too much, those sorts of things. And it's a way for them actually to stay above reproach is that if you're not in a, a position that somebody could consider perhaps compromising. Now, granted, they were just being introduced, but I'm sure too, William was like, not only are you hugging me and I don't want you to hug me, not only are you not showing re me respect by not curtsying me to me, you are instituting this, this hug that could look very wrong to other people and reflect badly on myself and my marriage with my wife. And I don't like that. And I feel like that's an incredibly important thing to recognize is as well is that sometimes people just don't even want the image of somebody getting too close to them in that way. So my grandfather, godly man, he will be 90 this year. You know, he would avoid hugging a woman that way. He would totally avoid it because, again, he doesn't want anything reflecting poorly on his marriage with my grandmother or anything like that. He just wants that to be something, you know, he's just very, very careful in that way. Um, you know, obviously somebody who's like not family, you know, like me or whatever, but, um, it's just something where it's like, I'm sure William was just totally frustrated and angry that she did that. And so, and I feel like everybody's kind of jumping to the conclusion that, Hey, we've been told Megan is this super great person. She's so, so smart and intelligent. She's so cultured and elevated and yada, yada, yada. And they're like, does she not understand basic human interaction is that you don't initiate contact with somebody who doesn't want you to touch them or doesn't want you to touch them in a particular way? Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things. I will say I did hug somebody once and then I could just totally tell that I had surprised her and she didn't really like we were sort of friends, but I guess not that as close as I was thinking. And I was like, oh, I guess she didn't really want me to hug her. So uh, that was I mean, I've done that. So you can. I mean, people do mess up. But I feel like if you're meeting your family, it's, you know, your potential future family, especially the Royals, like be on your best behavior. Like I would curtsy no matter what Will Harry said. I would have said, I'm going to curtsy. And if I was just an American meeting them, I probably wouldn't curtsy because it's like, they're not my rulers. I would maybe nod my head or something, but I would not curtsy because they, I'm, I'm not living in their country or I'm not, you know, they don't rule mine. So I don't feel like I, I, I have that burden. But if I, if I was perhaps marrying into the British Royals or if I was in that aristocratic fold somehow, I would do it because that is the culture I'm now embracing. And so that is the world I live in now. So I act as if I'm in that world. Megan always wanted to act as if she was in Hollywood and that her way was always right. I'm like, no, why would you do that? Oh my goodness. Um, Bauer says Harry has dirt to do a second book to do damage. So, uh, Harry threatened this himself in his telegraph interview that he had, you know, he, the original draft was 800 pages. And so, uh, and I'm sure he does have dirt, but the monarchy has a lot of dirt too. The monarchy has a ton of dirt. I'm sure they could release and maybe they'll release their staff members from their NDAs and go, go nuts. And there's ways to get around that, ways to leak things. And again, they've seen Harry at his worst, and they should perhaps do a little bit of Game of Thrones negotiating go, hey, we have this over you. So you need to buck up and shut up or else we will do X. And we're not afraid to do that. And because Harry and Meghan have to be the ones that blink first. And Harry and Meghan don't have the power in this scenario unless the monarchy gives it to them. Monarchy needs to stay above it and then delve out, I guess, threats? <laughs> <laughs> is the best way to put it in order to make sure Harry and Meghan are, are, are put in place, keep them in their place. Don't let them go. Don't let them get into you. Let be the, you have to be the bigger player here. Um, so, um, Min asked, uh, was revealing his kill count a way for him to get his IPP status back? Oh yeah, absolutely. That was a hundred percent. I think what he was trying to do, but again, Harry and Meghan are idiots and, in the Mexican scenario, in this scenario. So Mex said, again, they initiated it without having any deal in place. They just thought the monarchy would bend. 
Harry and Meghan release this information without any backup, any assurance that they would get this status. So what was the point of it? Because at this point, I think the, the UK government should say no on the face of it because you shouldn't reward, reward stupid. The only reason his security threat increase is because he's the idiot in this scenario. That's the only reason. So it's like, don't, don't, um, don't, uh, what is it? Don't reward idiocy. That's, that's just my, my thing. And I meant to say thank you so much, Aubrey, for the tip if I didn't say so. And Poetry Chick, thank you again. I was watching a recent video and they said Megan will likely need to write about her childhood, Doria and Thomas, while telling the truth in any book she writes. What do you think? Yeah, I'm sure she is working on her own book. And I'm sure she really wants, again, to get her story out there because we have not heard enough about her. <laughs> She even said in the next book show, everybody's written about me. I've talked about all the time and nobody knows me. And it's like, well, the more we know you, the less we like you. So I feel like she's just so, so desperate to get the world to believe her. And unfortunately, the more she talks, the less the world believes her. So she's had kind of the opposite effect. And she just really, I think if she writes about this stuff, she'll need to answer questions and she'll, she'll, I think develop more inconsistencies because the more Harry and Meghan talk, the easier it is to find their own stinking inconsistencies in their own stinking stories. And that's again, only themselves. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Again, the more you, let's just say allegedly lie, you have to keep up with the well lies. And if you can't keep up with the lies, if you're constantly changing your narrative, it reflects poorly on you and everybody else. So I just think of Omid Scobie, who's had to walk back his story about Megan getting kidnapping training, which I'm actually pretty, pretty positive she probably did. Because, you know, we need to portray her as somebody who didn't get any help from the institution. And so they didn't do anything like that for her. And so now I Omid going, well, I heard that story and, and it was wrong, but it goes with my new book, The End Game, talking about how the terrible the monarchy is and inconsistent. I was like, dude, that's all you. You're supposedly the one who wrote the definitive count of their lives. And they're both saying you were giving the us BS. So again, it's just ridiculous that they constantly have to change the narrative. And I've been through security training like that. I've been through, although I didn't really technically participate because I was like, I don't think I'm going to really need this because <laughs> I don't plan on going to super dangerous locales. And I just like, I don't like loud noises and like the guns and stuff. But I mean, it was serious. They did like mock kidnapping attempts. And so mock carjackings and stuff. And it was interesting because they would fire off rounds. I mean, they were blanks, but it was loud. It was, it was chaotic. And they said too, that the adrenaline gets people, you know, their adrenaline gets pumping so much. That's a question of if they can even unlock their seatbelt. Like this one girl they did it with, and she couldn't even unlock her seatbelt. She was so tense and, you know, terrified. And it was like one of these adrenaline things that you don't even realize. And they do it kind of in stages where they kind of get more and more aggressive each time. And so I just watched it because I was like, I really just want to go to more to Europe. And I don't think I need that level of training. And it scares me. So, but I mean... It was serious. It was very serious. And I have no doubt, no doubt at all that Megan went through that training. I have no doubt about it. Because why? Because Princess Anne almost got kidnapped. Somebody tried to kidnap her. And I'm sure their security protocols are better now. But I'm sure they trained her in what to do in certain situations. Why would they not do that? That's just dumb. And why would not Harry insist she get that level of training if they all got it, which I'm sure they did, especially the high ranking ones. Again, but it also could be that she didn't get it because in part they, they, um, she's not high enough to need it. <laughs> but again, I still think that isn't the case because if you wanted to kidnap a member of the Royal family, you'd go after a lower ranking one. Cause that would probably be easier. I'm just saying. Um, so Mr. K, thank you so much for the tip with the Samantha Markle lawsuit, the Thomas Markle jr. Documentary, Megan's fight or flight instinct. Has landed her back in Canada. Now Courtney Cox is threatening to sue unless they do a retraction. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think, again, why include Courtney Cox in that? Again, all the dumb moves they did in this book is just unbelievable. It's insanely unbelievable that their editor let them get through with certain things. I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I don't know. It's just so, so crazy. But I, I will say, you know, 
I, I don't think Megan has told the whole truth about her childhood, but I don't know if the, her family really has told the truth either. But again, I don't understand why at the end of the day, if Megan was smart, she would have made him sign an NDA and be done with him. She would have made him sign an NDA as soon as she was getting with Harry. But I think she always thought she didn't, she cared so little about her family and thought they were so little a threat. She didn't think she needed to do anything to shut them up because she didn't think they had anything. Well, well, when you dis don't invite them to the wedding, when you ignore them and act like they don't exist, that you had nothing to do with them, that they are basically not related to you. They're, they're anomalous entities and stuff. Yeah. They tend to react badly to that. That's again, a human being thing, which apparently Megan and Harry are just completely clueless about. Oh, Eva says Prague is amazing. Yes. I want to go to Prague. I don't know how that started, but yeah, I want to go to Prague. I want to go to Prague. Um, Becky and McCoon says, what exactly are the RF supposed to apologize for? Everything. Everything that went wrong with Megan. Because Harry knows what they did. He knows what they did. So they need to apologize to Megan. That's what he said in the, the, the Taily, Daily Telegraph article. They know what they did. And again, and then he wants a list of everything they need to apologize for. And then they'll give the monarchy a list. Again, it's just idiocy, I think. Uh and it's just incredibly juvenile and immature going, okay, so we need our, 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 um, we need our apology and we need to this, 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 like a whole list of things you need to apologize for. And it's just a, like something to hang over their heads. I just don't feel like it's, it's, it's not, I don't think healthy, appropriate. I don't think it'll go well. Jen Adams. Thank you so much for the tip. People are saying Megan has a dirty old video, if you know what I mean. And that it's the big secret coming out. I don't know about that. I've seen um, at least one or two like deep fakes. So that's where they, they've gotten really, really good at faking a famous person's face on somebody else's in certain types of videos. And so uh, I could, I saw one that was definitely that. It wasn't totally explicit or anything, but it was probably on Tumblr or something. I can't remember, but I don't think that was real. And I, I you know, it could be, but I don't think to go in that direction. I think just her biggest Secret, I think, is what actually happened around her childhood, which I think has been a huge thing. And that she always wanted to be famous, and Harry gave her that opportunity. All right, Nick, thank you so much for the tip. You are so kind. And Jessica, again, thank you. Harry was okay, been the spare, and then make it happen. Yeah, I think he was okay. And it was interesting. I was watching this interview, and I meant to post it. And between all the social media stuff, I like to keep up with it. It's, it is hard sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and editing videos and everything. But there was this interesting video where it was with the spectator. And uh, so you can look on YouTube and the spectator. And so they're very, you know, well-regarded publication, one of the longest ones in the UK actually. And they were talking about how uh, they interviewed this woman and um, that she, she heard that it was more Harry screaming and Megan consoling him. And I actually could see that. I actually could see that. Is that Megan would just wind him up. And Harry would just go ballistic on people. But I think everyone, in the, but they all said she was a bully. So here's what I think happened. Yes, Harry was a screamer, but Megan was the one who could go to the staff and just totally devastate and humiliate them. And you don't have to use, you don't have to be a screamer to do that. You, it's, it's a powerful manipulative tool. It's something certain people can do. I just, my thing. But I absolutely am 100% positive that, that is what Megan did. And so I think um, Harry had been okay as a spare. Megan wound him up and told him he was the greatest thing of all time. Why can't he just, you know, force the monarchy to, and everybody else, he's better than William. He's better than everyone. You just need to get them all to believe that and talk about that. And so she would just wind him up and let him loose. And so, but I think all the staff knew, you know, cause if you're smart, you know, Hey, Harry was never like this before she came into the picture. So it, she was a catalyst for something that Harry said, I never changed when I met Megan. And I'm sure all his friends are like, yeah, the heck you did. You really, really changed. So I think all the staff changed or saw that change as well, because he used to be very popular with the staff. He used to be a really popular guy. Um, so I think they all saw that. So, oh, Janie, thank you so much for the super sticker. I wish, uh, or Janie super, that's that's a fun name, Janie Super. Um, I wish I could join you on your trip, but I'm in the hole and I want to save up for next time. I'm with you in spirit. Love your commentary. Great channel. Have a great trip. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I'm so excited. It's going to be so, so fun and so, so crazy. 
And yes, I realize I am a little bit behind on comments. So, but uh, I love getting to you guys and I love chatting with you. Um, Prince William is our King's first counselor. There is no way he'll stand by and let him bow to the threats of spoiled wingers like Harry. And don't forget the King is now his mother's son. So yes, thank you so much, Mr. K as well. But yes, I don't think, I think William is the backbone in this situation, but I think Charles is more willing to cave. Um, so I don't think, I think again, William is like, I don't want, I don't want to do any of this. Um, I want to protect my family, my heritage, my children. And so, um, so yeah. Oh, kids are all 2,500 watching. Let's move to the likes chat family. Oh, thank you. We now have 3,100. So yay. So many people. It's just so fun to chat with you guys. It's just so interesting. Oh, <laughs> so watch girl. Wow. 2,500 folks. Yeah. It's just incredible. I just love it. This is just so, so much fun. And it's awesome. As uh, Zafir asked, do you know any chance to cover the Asian monarchies? You know, I really don't. I apologize. Um, I would honestly cover all of them, but I think right now, again, there's the time, the time issue. And I do want to do a video on one point about the Japanese Royal family and, you know, Megan complains about the way she was treated. Oh my gosh, she should spend just a week in Japan and she would as a Royal and she, I think would just totally collapse. Um, because at least both of the empresses, so the current and the former, both suffered from bouts of mutism because just the, the insane pressures of that institution. Because you think, you know, Megan says the royal family in Britain is, is misogynistic. She should spend two days in Japan in their monarchy. It is just very rigid, very, very, you know, the, all the the line goes through the men still. And so the crown prince is technically the, the emperor's brother because the emperor and his wife only had one child. And I think they were probably lucky to have her. And she, the empress is an incredibly accomplished professional woman who has just been utterly crushed by that institution. So she, she doesn't come out much um, just because, or at least she did for a long time, just because of the insane amount of pressure she was facing. One of her best friends though is queen Maxima. Um, and they were just really, really good friends and, um, there's been a really sweet relationship that developed there um, because I think Maxima has been a great support because Maxima is just so gregarious and outgoing. And I think, um, I think it's Masako leans on her quite a bit. Uh, Judith, thank you so much for this super sticker. And I think I just saw one more maybe comment and then I'll go find other things too. Um, Asa Marie, Harry being racist by excusing Megan's actions because she's American. Harry and Megan are mir mir mirroring Diana's negative actions. Harry and Megan copying Kate and William with choosing to expose their kids to the media. Yes. So I would totally agree. I hate Harry going, well, Megan's just an American. It's like people don't do that. <laughs> Not everybody does. Most normal women don't share their lip gloss, Harry. Most normal women don't share their lip gloss. It's gross. <laughs> Again, I would have a hard time. Like I was like, it would be like having them begging and pleading. And it's like being a terrible day. The wind's really bad. Their lips are so chapped. They're, they're about to go insane. That's when I would ask my, you know, or let my mom or my sister maybe borrow my, my lip gloss. Other than that, it's like a strong, strong no. And I did actually get my, I was actually struggling with my lips after Boston, I think because of the wind and the cold and stuff, they were really super chapped. And so, but I, I was staying with my grandparents and I went and I got like, we went to the store and I got my own lip gloss. I didn't ask my grandparent, my grandmother to share her lip gloss. Why would I do that? It's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, uh, Amber Weiss is, Le Sean Lester is also suing Meghan Markle. She's looking into it. I, I don't, I'm not a legal expert. I don't think her case is super strong. Um, just because I think probably what they did falls under fair use. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I haven't heard any more about that except for the fact that she's trying to figure out if she, you know, what, what options they might have. Okay. Um, Mr. K, thank you so much for the tip. In the 2009, the section I was in the UK Special Forces ran security drills and kidnapped training for Princess Kate before their wedding. She was a quick learner. We felt so guilty for scaring her. Yeah, I mean, it's intense. If you've ever been through anything like that, it's it's really intense. And that's why I was like, I'm just going to sit on the curb and watch everybody else go through it. Because I they were actually going into the field and I was not. So, um, yeah, I'm sure they were absolutely... 
I'm sure she was, Kate was absolutely, you know, put through the ringer. And I have no doubt Megan was too. Because again, you also have to say too, and this is just really interesting to consider what they asked us. Is like, you know, if you were, if, the, if there was a threat of sexual assault, do you want to fight back and be killed? Or will you allow it to happen in the hopes of maybe getting away? It was a really interesting it's a really interesting like thought exercise, <laughs> which sounds really weird, but it was super fascinating to think about because they're like some people would rather die than be assaulted. And then other people are willing to be assaulted if there's a chance they, they may live. And I was just like, that is such a fascinating thought process. Um, like to just consider there was a book too. And I'm so bummed now. I never, I never got the, um, got the title of it. Cause again, it was just an interesting ethical exercise it was about the holocaust and if there was if you there were jews behind a back room and the baby started crying and the nazis were going through and trying to find them do you potentially suffocate the baby to keep them from crying or do you let them cry and find everybody there's no good answer to that it's super i don't know why but and those are just interesting thought process questions for me uh john alvarez morning where's megan she has disappeared yes she is in the ether i have no clue where she is <laughs> nor does anybody else um and so it'll just be interesting to see what is going on and if she does come out with this big bada bing bada boom you know announcement type of thing to try to get attention back on her in in a, a good way i guess so it'll be interesting to see um js Craw uh, crawford thank you so much for the tip uh, Chairman Walter said, I saw YouTube blog about the Sussexes put two younger ch oh, whales, children for sale, like images. Um, if they did that, oh my gosh, they would get sued up the wazoo. There are huge, huge in the UK and in Europe in general, there are huge, huge laws regarding taking pictures of children. They're massive. Uh, I remember I was in Edinburgh years and years ago and they were talking about how it was like a huge thing like a, it was like a radio conversation. What do you do if you're at the park and you take a picture of your child and there's another child in the background? Cause that was like a potential like lawsuit case or something. It was fascinating. I'm like, that is a really weird question to consider. Um, so John Alfred's asked, did you get any new books on the Royals? I got a lot of new books. Cause I like went to Barnes and Noble. Sorry, I'm putting Miss Pippa down. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to find <laughs> whatever interesting books I come across. Uh, so I got, I got, I think Alison Ware, I think was the author and she has like women of the crusades of chivalry or Queens of the crusade chivalry. I think I got a couple of her books there. Um, there's a series that kind of breaks up the different parts, sections of the British empire and gives kind of overviews. So I got a couple of those. I think foundation is the first one. I think is the name. I can't remember the author's name. Um, so I do have a lot because I do want to have books definitely be a huge part of the channel. And I'm like, I have like a stack of books that I really want to get into them. But time again, is my ever present enemy and spacing is also the enemy. So I would love to be able to read more, but I just don't have the time to yet. But hopefully if I can go full time here pretty soon, um, I'll be able to read more and share more about what, um, what I get because I just do enjoy reading. And I think reading books too gives you a greater insight into kind of the royal sphere and what's going on. Cause there are things that last through the centuries, really. Uh, Jacqueline asked, you should do a show about the differences between Grace Kelly and Meghan Markle. Oh yes. Yes. That is something I definitely want to do. Cause there are huge glaring differences. Number one, Grace Kelly had to learn French. She had to learn French. I don't think she ever got really great at it. I think it was something that she still struggled with. Uh, but, you know, Monaco, they speak French. And so she had to learn French. And her children uh, also all have American accents, which is kind of unique and different because usually in at least Europe, at least somebody I met, they said, you know, their, Mar their English teachers are usually from the UK. And so somebody told me once my accent was hard to follow. <laughs> and I'm like, but I don't really have an accent. <laughs> but he said my accent, the way I speak is a bit harder to follow because they're used to British English instead of American English. So I just thought that was, again, another interesting little, little tidbit. Um, so yeah, I just think it's so, so fun. Um, okay. Oh, Cindy, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Sandra C also, what do you think about Harry's threat to write another book? I think he'll probably, 
I mean, again, I think he's just going to start having to go into like conspiracy realm, which they're already at to a certain extent. But it'll just get worse because I don't think they have anything else to write about. Because unfortunately, they weren't in the royal family that long. That's again, Megan should have stayed at least five years with the royals before jumping ship. And then she should have had a really good reputation and really, really liked when she left because all their reputation has done since they left. It was it, her, her repu her likability was always middling. Even after she married Harry, she was never, she had never surpassed Catherine or William or anything. She was just still middling. So you could just tell people were, you know, I think especially the, the very expensive engagement dress and then, you know, saying she didn't Google or know anything about Harry. And then, that no family was at her wedding, I think did start to raise a lot of red flags for people, which just grew and she never recovered from. But again, I think she could have recovered if she had stayed and just not basically proved to everybody that she was really only at it for the title and the money. But again, Megan and Harry thinking through logically is not, not their, their forte in any way, in any way. As in my, why isn't Harry being deported after his drug use? Because he is a famous person and famous people get treated differently. Yes, I do. But it could be that and that may be why they've disappeared for a bit is that he is getting pressure going, hey, you admitted to this and you're not technically supposed to do that if you're living here. So it'll be interesting to see where, where it goes. <laughs> Aw, stuck on string says, Pippa the pup is so adorable for peeking out. Yes, she is. And then this is Bella right here. Hello. There's her little ears. Pippa's now off. I just wanted to make sure I put her on the floor instead of her trying to jump on the floor. Um, just so they they told me she needs a couple weeks to really make sure her her leg is good. But she's, she's using it more. She still pulls it up a bit. So it just takes a while. She was just so wrapped up and she couldn't move it very well and couldn't put a lot of weight on it. So it's just kind of one of those things. But, oh, I love your channel. I've had to teach both British and American English in France. Good thing. I love Monty Python. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so awesome, though, that you got to teach both British and American English. I think that would be just so interesting. I think the differences are so are so cool. And I actually have um, most of my Harry Potter, Harry Potter books are actually British versions. I bought a couple of them when I was in Portugal because uh, I was in Portugal the, the year the last one was released. So I actually bought Harry Potter in Portugal, which is really cool. And I saw the fifth movie in Portugal. So. That was just very fun. Um, but yeah, it was just, there's so differences and so unique and interesting. Ocean Gal, 163. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Erica Adams, I pre-ordered Valentine Lowe's book on Audible. Will you read it? Possible book club. Yes. So I have talked about a book club for a long time. There's so many things I want to do. Um, I'm hoping to start a podcast and I reached out to somebody I knew hoping they could maybe help me a bit with that. Cause I'm getting to the point where I can do, I mean, I can do a decent amount of things myself. Absolutely. But, um, especially if you're, I'm still working full time, time is an issue. And so getting enough time to do stuff is, can be challenging. And I, especially reading can take a bit and I do enjoy audible books. So I could listen to Harry's book, but I like, gosh, Lee, I really don't want to, I really, really don't want to read and listen to himself talk. I think that would, that would just, I would want to pull my hair out. So I'm faster at reading than I am listening to an audible book, but, um, I do want to definitely start a book club at some point. And so I'm really excited about that. And then I'm, you know, got again, a couple ideas for a podcast. So hopefully we'll get that together too. So yeah, we are all done. I think we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Um, so somebody asked, well done. Uh, are there special cushions in the form of ramps or stairs to help Pippa get on the sofa bed? Pippa would be kept safer by something like that. We've tried stairs before. She didn't like them. Um, and so <laughs> she, uh, so I don't really let her on my, my bed anymore where she fell off uh, just because it's not dangerous. So she's sleeping on the floor in her bed and she has an Ugg blanket, which costs like a hundred bucks that she lays on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cause I, I felt she really seemed to like that blanket. And so I would just kept putting that over her bed and she loved it. So she gets to keep that. 
So she's now again sleeping on the couch. So we'll we'll try to figure out a ramp or something. I, I think she'll be okay. And she likes jumping, so I think preventing her, trying to get her to go off one thing, I think will be tough for her because she just likes to getting on and off things. So I think she'll be she'll be fun. Um, so she'll be good. And it's good. They say when your bones break, you come back and they're better. I actually have um, a plate and you, you can't see it, but they have a massive long scar right there. So I have about a plate and eight or nine screws in my wrist. So I'm all for her trying to get back on her normal routine. Cause that'll be, that'll be good. Um, so hopefully, uh, Cindy Lou just saw a couple other here. I see Megan marrying an 80 year old billionaire. Harry will get the kids to move to Africa, working for Chelsea's jewelry company, or we'll see Harry working at in and out burger and drive through Cali thoughts. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much for the tip. I, I, you know, both of those scenarios, I feel like could kind of work. I don't think Chelsea wants Harry back. Uh, but I think ch the life Chelsea leads is what Harry would have loved for himself. And that's what I think is a tragedy is that Chelsea's life seems awesome. She goes on incredible vacations. She has this jewelry company, this boutique tourism company. Like I have a huge amount of admiration for her. And so she's really made her own world and life. And I think that's fantastic. And I think Sadly, that's exactly what Harry wanted. He has the antithesis of what he wanted, which is laid back in Africa in the bush. Now he is in the uptight. Well, not really uptight, but, you know, California is laid back, but it's very much about how you look. Everything is about how you look. And so, yeah, I don't think that's probably quite as much the world that he wanted. Um, is it true Harry and Meghan were turned away from entering the BAFTAs? Apparently, yeah, they were not invited to a BAFTA thing. I think it was a statement the company released about that which was kind of interesting. So um, so they gave a long thing. Apparently, I'd have to look at it again that, yeah, they didn't want Harry and Meghan there at all. Um, <laughs> I think Charles is caving as the media spinning it for narrative and clickbait after what Harry wrote in Spare about Camilla. Why would Charles give forgive such an attack on his wife? And I think that's incredibly true. Charles loves his wife. And I think as well, when you look at the royals, is that Camilla has done an excellent job. She's kept her head down. She's worked. She has not been drug into anything she doesn't complain and she really is just she just has come through this with a lot of grace considering all the hate that has been thrown at her over the years and harry and megan definitely cannot say the same and so i've and charles deeply loves her i think the idea too that he was that harry and um harry says that you know they begged his father not to marry camilla charles had to marry camilla he had to he's gonna be the head of the church of england he couldn't not marry her like that just was not going to work. That was always going to be the case. He was going to marry her. I just don't totally believe it. So anyways, but yeah, I do think like, let's see, where did it go? Laura Adams says Hollywood is turning their backs on Harry and Meghan. Yes, I do think so. I think again, when you can't be trusted to help and protect your own family, I think people are less interested in you. And again, people I think can smell the rat. Even if you don't know consciously exactly what's wrong, you, you, you see the issue. So guys, thank you so much for watching this morning. Pippa, who is currently sleeping on her blanket next to me. Thank you as well. I hope to see you guys again next week and we'll talk soon. Bye.